and running around like a chicken with her head cut off. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Gallery Gallery and your Gallery Gallery. Plus, for you to have no idea because I've got two awesome, awesome, awesome women who are the features. First one we're going to have up here is Virginia Hunt. Give it up for Virginia Hunt. Yeah. 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 I'm like, yeah, but we want a drink. What are you talking about? And then at the end of the evening, because we've got to in a little space, we're going to cram in here a little bit of a bird on my <laughs> And I'll give lots of praises to them later, but <laughs> as I said, you're like Egypt and in style or something like that, what I'm doing. But I wanted to be able to read poems for these two features that we have this evening. So I have two poems that I thought would be appropriate for my two women here. And because I saw Roberta here first, <laughs> Well, I did. I saw her here first. She was the first one I saw. Um, th that means, I guess, I'm going to go to a piece that was a longer piece that I did a while ago. I don't know why I thought this would be cool. But just because we're all looking for different things as women and one of our roles and things. Someone asked me a long time ago to write a piece about being a pioneer. And it was related to... Uh, Laura Ingalls and 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 the television show, which I never saw. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I'm gonna come up with this thing and I hope that this fits somehow with the ladies in the house. This is called Pioneer. It amazes me that the first definition of pioneer is a person or a group that originates or helps open up a new line or thought or activity or a new method of technical development. And that the second definition of pioneer is merely one of the first to settle in a territory. To pioneer is to open or prepare for others to follow. You said you were all pioneers. What did you know of these uncharted lands? And more importantly, why did you bring your old and tired ideas with you? How, with all that spiritual baggage, could you plan to start anew? And what were you running from? Yes, pioneers, you were all so brave, so bold, running away to a land of promise, not to give you more, but promise not to be where you were running from. Running away, taking all your old edicts with you, all of your old theories, hoping a change of scenery was all you needed to make everything better. How can you start anew when all you do is move your problems? to a different place. Yes, my screen got small. Yes, pioneers, you were all so brave, so bold. Uh, but you, Laura, you were only a little girl. What could you be crusading for? Were you following your heart, your mind? Were you searching for the truth? Did you know what it was you were even looking for? Or did you even look for something at all? Were you merely trying to survive it all, blindly following your powerful father, your powerful God? What were you a pioneer of? Did you feel that cold slap of wind from the barren plains and think that this was freedom? When you ran outside and played make-believe, wearing your little dress, little ribbons in your hair, did the cold gusts of wind on your calves circle around over above your knees make you feel free from the journey your elders forced you to take? When slaves were bought and sold, when women were purchased for harems, they had no say over where their masters roamed. They merely had to follow and keep their mouths shut. And did you feel that way too? To pioneer is to open or prepare for others to follow. 
to you. Your daddy was a pioneer. But think about it again. Think about how alone you felt in the plains, making up stories to pass the time, how sometimes you would go out into the fields and run and run and run, hurtling forward until you couldn't see that little house anymore. And was this your moment of sanity? Was this what kept you alive? I know we've all felt that feeling before, after being on vacation or just being somewhere else and knowing that you have to leave and go back home and be that person everyone expects you to be. Be the fearful little girl instead of the alive little girl. And I know each and every one of us has felt that feeling of going home once, wondering if it was possible to just never come back and you would run and run and run, hurtling forward until you couldn't see your little house anymore, looking for something new, then always finding only more and more planes. You were too young to create something new, to truly be a pioneer, so you knew you had to go back. You couldn't keep running, so you'd have to accept the world that was handed down to you. And after running through those endless fields, I'm sure that slow walk back to the house, because you knew how your mother would be calling you back for dinner, I'm sure that slow walk back was all the more painful. When I was little, I would save up all my change and tell my mother I was going for a bike ride in the neighborhood. And then I would sneak over to the local ice cream parlor, <laughs> even though I shouldn't eat sweets before dinner. And did you sneak off to the general store for penny candy? Was this your freedom? Was this your rebellion? Was this your decision to accept your own ideas and not those of your mother, your father, your God? Was this your attempt to get away from following? Was this your moment of sanity? Was this what kept you alive? To pioneer is to open or prepare for others to follow. Was this what made you a pioneer? Revolution, reaction, betrayal, 
and the founding of a more oppressive state. Instead, we suggest art that employs non-art social energies in co-resistance. This art is dependent on its lived context and recognizes the importance of solidarity, community, and the necessity to work across boundaries and speak multiple languages. This art takes a form that, like water, is shape-shifting, infinitely flexible, searching, and penetrating a for form that is self-critical and actively conscious. This art occupies and gazifies. As capital markets have complex infrastructure, just-in-time inventory, and 24-hour feedback, cultural producers need to build their own network of support communication and distribution, defining success for themselves and within their own communities outside of a hierarchical market structure. Whether, these, whether those terms are political and or formal. That's it. The word Gezi, G-E-Z-I, I I have no idea what it means. It's not in my 1960s dictionary. <laughs> Maybe someone in the arts knows what it means. Uh, my second one, well, I went to an artist congress based on this exhibition, and it will be going until the 22nd of June. And the 22nd of June at 5.30, there will be a, another part of a picnic, 2700 South Halstead. So you can be, you should have time for the exhibition and the, and, and the picnic. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. it, it gave me a chance to write a poem. The title, Results from Sitting in a Barber Chair. The epigraph is from Sherman Skolnick, who was reported murdered by Mossad eight years ago this month, report from an anonymous source. New York City firemen, there were bombs in the building. Cyberspaceorbit.com. Crucial info evidence. Explosives toppled WTC. As Uncle Sham gets civil war going in Ukraine and Angela Merkel is confronted by anti-fascist demo protesting her support of David Duke forces drank nach Ostening toward the Russian border, I attend an artist congress public forum for art and social change based on exhibition of Stalinized depression era art blocked out on the Northwestern campus that loosed on the world 9-11 cover of artist Jim China White Thompson, probably number two, for high crimes and misdemeanors after Henry Kissinger. I walk in late on a politicized union, SEIU, sabotaging an Occupy Wall Street move to block a New York bridge, reminding me how Communist Party unions defeated the May-June days of Paris 68. The preserving authority for NATO strikes in Africa. In the well of Barber Theater, Amphitheater, 
What starts as a one-man show mutely drafts me center stage with three other minority males. Where were the minority women? Three of us holding a piece of watermelon whilst surrounded by rope symbol, ambiguous for either lynching or unity. And the crippled leading actor, inter alia, sings as Paul Robeson sang a spiritual and exits on his knees merely wiping the floor, reminding me again of Paul Robeson, trained as a lawyer, playing slave stevedore in showboat with Clarence Muse, trained as a lawyer, likewise Menio, the best they could do, representing what law means in America more than people dare think as his 60th anniversary of Brown versus Board of Education, long after Thurgood Marshall is marginalized on the Supreme Court. In the session open for radical discussion, I barely get two for tax-refusing, non-violent revolution. Too not too much enthralled by the facts of Jewish chauvinism, excluding me from Chicago anarchism. But I get theater applause for Northwestern divesting from Israel, counterpointed by divesting from coal, when wars for Israel and trashing our environment are really one and the same thing. <laughs> Leftover humus and croquettes testify that the cylinder was less than half full. Underserving homeless beggars on bull mish, who could not find radical arts suburbanized. I have power over you. We will get to food, Jeffrey. Thank you very much. And and I'm so glad I got to hear that there were bombs in the building line. Because if I ever had the balls to ever like actually sample something and do something, I'm still going to have that. Just from one of your takes, there were bombs in the building. There were bombs in the building. I put that in the, I have no idea, but and I'll never do it, but I've got this idea. But then again, I have the idea from like Azarika and Cher Povo when they play tennis. One of them goes, oh, and the other one goes, oh. And have that going back and forth, so it will never happen. But I think of these things. And so because French Open's coming up, so I had to mention that I'm an idiot. And now I should have said that, especially because I had the cue, because of a job right here, um, because we're always worried about you know the government spying on us and whatever, and you can't really go anywhere without a camera being around outside. I want to let you all know that I am monitoring you as well. <laughs> <laughs> I want to let you everybody know where I think most everyone knows, but I'm recording the open mic as well as the features, and that means that um, you will be a YouTube cast of the open mic, and because we've got so many awesome features, you might be smudged in somewhere as a bonus feature later on, but you might be a podcast as well for uh, in the future, but just letting you all know, because, you know, if you don't want to have your voice out there for the world, I just want to give the heads up to everybody here. And now I'm going to give a shout out because I'm going to let a lot of rotating here for the women. Give it up for Elizabeth Moreno. I love you.
Sayer watching me, don't <laughs> roll until I have my lipstick out. <laughs> yeah. You know, you gotta cover yourself. Okay. Make sure they get your good side. A good side. A good side. They're all good sides. Um, these two pieces. These two pieces are from um, my newest checkbook, Ceremonies. I did a little Woo! through Dancing Girl Press's website. Awesome. And uh, yeah, it's it's. How many pages? Well, they're not numbered. Oh, so, so you don't uh, know how many pages? What? <laughs> what? Uh, 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 roughly 20 yeah, pages. Really cool. Cool. Oh. They're small type. <laughs> so, it comes with your own magnifying glass. It looks like breathing space, like uh, blank pages in between, so it's like a solid state awesome. poetry, not, you know, like... Not just filling it up with whatever. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Very cool. So I'm choosing tonight to read two pieces about two men, and um, one political, who should recognize immediately, and the second one... Um, Devotedly apolitical and not with the cinema here. First is called Black Ice. It starts with the line uh, from the late Geraldine Ferraro to the Torrance California Daily Breeze an interview. Quote, if Obama was a white man, he would not be in this position. And if he was a woman of color, he would not be in this position. <laughs> and we know where Geraldine is. <laughs> She put her arms down, allowing him to approach her. They could be counted on, especially to bring a tasty side dish to company socials. Our protege, proud of seeing one rise so high beneath our efforts. The black ice, slippery, you could fall down at the least appropriate moment. She put her arms down allowing him to approach her. We're slipping and falling on something we don't see. Blackness is in our human resources manual, volume two, so we're covered, right? The cow, with her mouth open, keeps mooing more. Damn, did you do Now, how black is black? Like, if we don't know somebody was black, and are we still liable? Like, if we thought somebody was just Mexican or something. <laughs> <laughs> the second piece is um, for Owen Land, AKA George Landau. He was a, a really internationally shown and screened uh, avant-garde filmmaker who was one of the founders of the School of the Art Institute's uh, film program in the 60s. Kaddish for Owen Land, 1946 to 2011. Lanky stride, flaming hair, and some downtown New York City street in 1981. Egg cream. He wanted to be my first. As the Friday night sun had begun to set, and we had no place to stay so far. No egg cream, no egg, but it tasted New York City delicious. I give thanks for a friendship light as air, crisscrossing places, minting new tourist attractions, the soup counter in the Tenderloin, the mud club in Soho, a stay with the Fellini of Ohio, a reading gig on Woodstock Cable, a Terry Riley concert of many chants and drones, Fabulous histories of obscure objects. A friendship reconnected through the internet. A lens with no cap. Bloodless, comical images. Thank you for a road trip to his mother, Ray. As we drove southbound, Hurricane Inez veered north, providing zero visibility. He dropped his family names. Ashamed of being Jewish, son? Barbed wire conversations were snipped by a display of childhood art and pictures. A gentle mother's revenge. And an insistent plea to take her family china, as after all, her only son gave her no grandchildren. 
I give thanks for wide shoulders not meant to lean upon, but to propel him forward into the delight of being, sensual, sure, and barely holding him to the ground. Adios, my dear solitary friend. You surely have a place in the world soul. See her enough. That's awesome. You should come more often, my darling. And um, when I think of the next open micer, I should think of the numbers seven minus one equals six because July sixteenth is the date that he is actually featuring here at this open mic. You have the first one later on. This is seven sixteen. So please, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Jerry. I'm not known as a classical form guy, but these are some attempts at a haiku. It's not the, the official 21st birthday celebration, but it is the 21st of the month. So uh, these are thoughts on the numbers 5, 7, 17, and 21. Today's the 21st. <laughs> 5 is the number of sides on U.S. military nerve and brain center. Seven is an instant win on the first roll in a crap game. <laughs> then it's a killer. Seventeen is the age you can be tried as an adult for a crime, but can't vote or drink. Oh, wow. Holy cow. 21 is a natural in a game by the same damn name. Go over, you bust. 21 is an age that allows you to drink beer, but you must have license to sell. <laughs> um, a few of you were waiting for the bus, but not all, so I'll still do this. Um, it's called Mellowed Dramas. Sons, daughters, passing dreaded tests, conversations turn to dating dilemmas, facial crises, promotions to higher offices and the right brands, new clothes, an addition to the house, commercial break, answers to pair and zit problems, cousins, uncles, Returning from war, undamaged, medals on chests. Commercial break comes relief, or I'm sorry, comic relief from constipation. <laughs> One armed veteran walks into clinic a block from TV studio, past a half torn apartment building. Sons, daughters, getting back together with boyfriends, girlfriends, lost early in the episode. Slow scrolling house, slow scrolling home from school, protected from bad breath, zits, and fashion crimes. This is called Ode to the Guitar. And unplugged, flat picked, finger picked, with, without, vibrato, wah wah pedal, 12 string, 6 string, solo, teamed with drums, bass, horns, 
moves feet, tugs on hearts, inspires hip and shoulder shaking, miming, debates rage, is it real, jazz, folk, blues, you can go on and on. Soon rivaled the sax for dominance in the early days of rock and the violin for serenading. Thank you. very much and that makes me think that I should say this now. Um, I was going to talk about something else but I have to say because you brought up music, I was originally planning on doing a song for my two ladies that came here for the open Do it! Well no because my guitarist John couldn't make it. Oh, can you do that to I can play air guitar. Do you want to hear Fast As You Can, sung by Fiona Apple? Because that's what we were going to do. We were going to do oh, Fast that's, that's okay. That's good. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> do you see my eyes like saucers? Do you want me to? You know, that actually happened once when I was running an open mic, and somebody was like, can you do I'm Not a Pretty Girl? They actually requested that, and I'm like, well, I know it, but he doesn't know how to play it. Do I just sing it a cappella? And I sing, I'm not a pretty girl, a like cappella. But I, I don't think, if there's room and you want me to sing, because I feel like I'm weirdo just sing it. But, well, no. Yeah. Do you guys want to hear me sing? Be brave. Please. I got my Do it a cappella. Please do. I let the beast in too soon, I don't know how without my hand on his throat, I fight him always and still. Oh darling, it's so sweet, you think you know how crazy, how crazy I am. You do, you say you don't spook easy, you don't go, but I know and I pray that you will. Fast as you can, baby, run free yourself of me, fast as you can. Oh, I'm baby, soften your palm rest and roll hungry for a fight, and I will not let you in. My pretty mouth will frame the phrases that will disprove your faith in man. So if you catch me trying to find my way into your heart from under your skin, fast as you can, baby, scratch me out, free yourself fast as you can. Fast as you can, baby, scratch me out, free yourself fast as you can. Sometimes my mind don't shake and shift, but most of the time it does. And I'll get to the place where I'm begging for a lift, or I'll drown in the wonders and the water. And I'll be your girl if you say it's a gift. And you give me some more of your drug. Yeah, and I'll be your pet if you would just tell me it's a gift. Cause I'm tired of wise, choking on wise. Just need a little because, because. I let the beast in, and then I even tried forgiving him, but it's too soon, so I'll find him again, 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 again. And for a little while more, I was so in the uneven winds, complaining, blame the sterile land. But if you're getting any bright ideas, quiet, dear, I'm blooming within. Fast as you can, maybe late, but at least about fast as you can. Leave me, let this thing run as right fast as you can. Fast as you can, fast as you can, fast as you can. Yeah. <laughs> I totally wasn't thinking I was going to do that. What I was coming up here to say. <laughs> <laughs> Which had nothing to do with it. I just wanted to get a little side because he was doing music, so I thought I'd say that. Was um, that um, for some who do not know, some here do, I have, I have a feature here. 
um, on June 18th, which is the weekend before June 22nd, which is an event that's going on from Joffrey, which I'm afraid I'm out of town for. I'll be on the other side of the country for. But um, the Wednesday before, uh, I'm the feature here because I've got a book release. And one of the things in the book release is called Gorilla Haiku Readings. I am asked, I've asked a few people to read haikus. I'll give the haiku, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the haiku, somebody's going to strum some music, and people just storm up and read something, and they give me something, and I'll follow, and just sort of whatever order is whatever. And some people here aren't a part of that, like my next open record. That is not a request that they should do something. I'm just, I'm just thinking, like, so I've asked a few people, but if, if anybody's interested in the idea of coming up and reading a haiku and there's a part of my feature, but, you know, if you want to, and that's on June 18th, let me know. What but day? June 18th, Wednesday, 618, and there's nothing mathematically that I can pull off about that. And what are we doing? Um, the, the idea is that somebody would read a haiku. I've, I, I've got a book release, and two big book volumes, and I've also released them as many little books, and one of them includes 100 haikus. So I've got a bunch of haikus, and so it's like somebody has a haiku they like, and they'll have a page, and, and you can look at the haiku beforehand, okay. of course. Uh, but I will give them a hard copy, and they'll have it, and after that, we'll have a haiku that I'm supposed to read after them. So whatever or the people, that's what I'm going, okay, you give me that one? No, that's what I'm reading next, because I don't know, because this is going like you reading when that. When is that? <laughs> when is that? June 18th, 618, and there's nothing mathematical about it. Six, what? I don't know. <laughs> yes, it's six, six, seven, eight, because the one plus six plus one is seven, eight minus one is seven. I, I, I think kind of a crazy it. one. I followed it, but nobody else would follow it. <laughs> <laughs> I can follow that, but nobody else will. June 18th is the second one that is, because we're every other week, and it's the second one that's in June. And it's before my birthday, which is. <laughs> if anybody wants to know about it. But anyway, I'm talking a lot. And I shouldn't be, because we should be hearing posts like the one Lynn West. So, yeah. my darling, get on up there. The day after the summer solstice. The day after the summer. May I come to your birthday party? I'll be in 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 uh, Annapolis. I know, which is why I can't make it to Joffrey, like you're saying. So, so I miss I you. Well, then come to my feature. <laughs> and if I can sing to you, I'd appreciate it. Yay! <laughs> The minute you walked in the joint, I could tell you were a man of distinction, a real big spender, good looking, so refined. Say, wouldn't you like to know what's going on in my mind? So let me get right to the point. I don't pop my cork for every guy I see. Hey, big spender, why don't you spend a little time with me? Would you like to have fun, fun, fun? How's about a few laughs, laughs, and laughs? I could show you a Good time, let me show you a good time. The minute you walked in the joint, I could tell you were a man of distinction, a real big spender. Hey, big spender! Bum, 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 bum. Hey, big spender! Bum, 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 bum. Thank you.
let's get the kinks out. <laughs> I want to give an announcement for my two features. We've got about 15 minutes left for the open mic in this. So I, I, I'm just thinking because we've got like three or three uh, four oh, people. Okay. So okay, can, can I can, 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 can I do can something? Can I do something else? Yes. Well, tell me when to move when I should. I was just saying, okay. well, don't do three more. No, 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 it hurts, it hurts. Push them down to a place of comfort. Tubes breathe, tubes feed. The voice soft, but very sure. Muffled through the trach. Her will continues. She wants, she feels. My will continues. I want, I feel. And the door is open. She asks me to sing. She glows, I glow. Our spirits become one as we are free to travel and be all that we are. Our freedoms know no boundaries because we have done all that we could and still love each other. Thank you. Packages of expectation lie under the tree through the cold, bleak months of a long winter. The tree stands and sparkles. I see the open display of tinsel lights and shiny bulbs, shining foils, cover boxes, like mirrors, reflecting possibilities. The soft pain of empty promises cuddles my heart as I listen to the words I long to hear. Nowhere do these words guarantee that the doors they open will hold to the treasures they promise. But I listen like an eager child, pinned to the grim fairy tales, hanging on for the happy ending. Children's playgrounds and bouncing balls, they run, fall, and get back up again. Skinned knees, bruised hearts, all part of the ride, continuing to grow up, ever listening to a good story, always hoping, believing, because without our hopes and dreams, the ball stops bouncing. Thank you. Thank you. I want you to understand we've got 10 minutes left for four more people. I just oh, want to play No, no, I, that's why I'm like, I should really be, because I don't know if we can run over or not, so. Check it out. <laughs> I, think, I think I start the old music thing at 9.30. Well, they want us to clear the freak out of here and stuff. So if you're ready to scooch over, that's all right. But I don't want, you know, I want to make sure my features have their space, is all I'm thinking. And I don't even have my list, but I believe there is a guy who's been here once before. So I can't just give him a newbie treatment. But I can anyway, because he's awesome. So please, ladies and gentlemen, Tom. Tom Sherry. He's like, if I come off, then I won't get as much as pause. <laughs> Hello? Hello? It's an early morning commute on Western Avenue. Daybreak, dawn, the sun became a Rube Goldberg machine. Early morning sedative keeps Western in Bedlam. And the birds sing a dirge, quarter steps on a cleft butt. Only the moon discerns some subtleties of noise. <coughs> All the while, rain wraps on windowsills. Vampires needing permission to be let inside.
drink holder. It's <laughs> awesome, isn't it? That works. <laughs> Saturday day on campus laudamus, or fuck time. I cannot fault the alarm clock for waking me. It serves my purpose. I can, however, chuck it into my wall. <laughs> Can't do that with homo sapiens. I thought we were wise like the name implied. But we're only following ruts, worked into the trail. Staying in dotted lines, children, serves what purpose to bow down, worship, golden calf chronos? Was order made from chaos when we smoked the calendar into bullion? Then gave it form, golden calf on marble altar of anxiety. Reality check. Check my reality. We're stuck inside a bronze bull. Flame underbelly, trumpet blares bright from its mouth. Volaris, let us out of here! Look at it both ways and see things like a child. Reheat your mind and find the patience of the calendar are not worthy of praise or disdain. And the clock hand, sorry. And the clock hands aren't worth a single burnt offering. Just a glance, quarter of the eye, as we walk by a bum, broken, begging change. Es c'est la vie, c'est la vie. But all of us are too diverted by bread and circus, trundling our way into the butt crack of the next day. And just because I brought the drink stand after they have to put the beer there, even though I'm not going to use it, I'm just going to call the next person and take my beer away with me. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please give it away for somebody who I know is reading something. Okay. Okay. At my feature. What is, how, how selfish is he? Um, please, because I'm like, get the astronomy references, you've got to show up. So please, give it up for Mr. Bob Robert Lawrence. Woo! Hi, everyone. Uh, some of you know um, I'm the founder of the Mile High Party, and I'm sometimes candidate for president. So, uh, yeah. so this is one of our uh, little diatribes. It! It's raining, it's pouring, the old man is. It's snowing and blowing, it's bitter cold. It! Chameleon, super ambient, it! Everyone molds and groans about it. Once elected the Mile High Party, we'll do something about it. <laughs> Listen to just a few of its crimes. Chicago, 1871. It has been as dry as attic dust. The O'Leary barn, mysterious blaze. The winds of it energize red flames. The demons hopping from roof to roof. Citywide, hell on earth conflagration. 300 people pass from flesh to ash. Northern Illinois, 1967. Thunderclouds sweep the plains. It unleashes the heavy artillery. Funnels of gyroscopic fury. One blast Belvedere as school lets out. Yellow buses tossed like toys, 13 dead. Another assaults the Oak Lawn rush hour. 16 slain at 95th Street in Southwest Highway. <coughs> Holding pattern over Indiana. American Eagle Flight 4184 to O'Hare, 1994. Imagine yourself as passenger. Prop engines whine like lawnmowers. Your window looks like a washing machine. Outside, it ices the wings with freezing rain. The plane rolls 77 degrees. People scream, this ain't great America or a dream. <laughs> the plane struggles back to even keel. You sigh, but your hope isn't real. The plane rolls a 360, plummets down, 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 dilly, down, 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 faster and faster and faster, velocity exceeding 430 miles per hour upon splat. 68 more victims of it. Do you remember 1995, the merciless heat wave, the weak, the lonely, the aged, over 500 of them beat to death. It's so hot at night, you'd swear there was a black sun radiating through an asphalt sky. Need I enumerate the everyday hassles perpetuated by it? <laughs> Flooded basements, arthritic pains, black eyes spin outs, rained out gains, heat exhaustion, frostbitten hands, blackout lightning, drought parched lands. The time for action is nigh. 
once elected mile high, will demand the censure of it by Amnesty International, the UN General Assembly, the Supreme Court, and the World Court for high crimes and misdemeanors against the people of this great city and everyone else on earth. We will also pass legislation to cool it off. <laughs> so cheer for the red, white, and blue. I'm voting mile high. How about you? <laughs> numerically 9 plus 1 is 10 uh, because on September 10th is when Bob Lawrence is actually featuring here. Yeah. So you have to keep that in mind because you know it's super awesome entertaining which he was just at uh, waiting for the bus on Monday which I bothered to drag myself over to which was kind of cool. I am growing up. Pardon? No. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> well, well you welcome. Like the 80s game show. You're yeah, welcome. Never mind. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Um, but the next person that's up, oh, now I have to come up with another one. Oh, because, well, seven two. Well, it's right before seven three, which is what it used to be the awesome day for the fireworks and isn't anymore. Which is like, what do you do with that for a day? But it's just awesome that he's around and he will sing for you and do awesome stuff for you before the great fireworks will go off in Chicago. So please, before the July 7th feature from Dan Cleary. Give it up for Dan Cleary. Come on. Well, thank you, Dan. Uh, as, it, uh, as people are singing a cappella, I'll sing one song a cappella and I'll run to one short poem. Yeah. Poet Southern use many words to say a simple thing. It takes thought and time and rhyme to make a poem sing. <laughs> With music and words I've been playing. For you I have written a song to make sure that you know what I'm saying. I'll translate as I go along. Fly me to the moon and let me sing among the stars. Let me know what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, Hold my hand. <clears throat> In other words, darling, kiss me. Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, I love you. Did you let the poetry bomb? Did yes, you? I did. This was addressed to a, a woman who used to work in a bar. Her name was uh, her name was Sharon, and she passed around the tables with uh, with a tray of, of uh, top toppling boxes. Her name her name uh, her name is Sharon. Gracious one, holding up the portals of the tavern. Carry at it on a column with a tray balancing toppling bottles. You call at the noisy tables, all good humor and warmth, your skin informed with 
gladness lit from within. Happy mother of poets, though this one appraises your salient parts, the pleasures beneath your dress in frothy summer with a whispered suggestion. You laugh at him and shower him with joy to sleep under your heart is what he desires. <laughs> Terrible though when those sing along. I'm trying to be real quiet. That was awesome, awesome, awesome. And for our last song on record, the evening is going to keep the short and sweet, like every single one of us here. Please give it up for the Fanato Robin Five. I was going to say, move yourself over a foot at least, this way. Yeah, you move the microphone. If you don't want the microphone, that's fine. <laughs> oh, there, there's a stage, and you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, I'm trying to do this from memory, so please bear with me. <clears throat> you tell me you love me. Ask me to believe I watch your face. I watch your face for clips of my smile. I don't believe you. Sometimes your words taste like holy water. I drink in every blessing. Sometimes your words fall like broken glass from mouth to skin. My palms are calloused with the stains of indifference. I search for resurrection in the margins of your arms, but somehow I've misplaced your promise, stuffed it deep inside my pockets. <laughs> deep inside my pockets. Um, nothing's very re nothing is real when it can't see the light. And I miss the moon. I miss the carnal knowledge between shadow and shape. Sometimes my wings are bent. I fall and fly in unequal parts. Sometimes I can't see the sky. <laughs> Sometimes I can't see the sky. I look down at the clouds tangled up inside of my ankles. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, but there is something intimate about shredded bone and tissue, about molding misshapen body parts into something different. What if I could unzip my skin, map the geography of each bruise and scar, peel away each layer of heart, scoop out the origins of me. These are the blueprints of my body. If only I could be an ocean split wide open, a melody ripped to current. If only I could climb inside my eyelids and taste the salt on my lips to clean any condensation of sadness. You tell me you love me. You ask me to believe. If only I could gather up the whole of me back through my ankles, maybe then, maybe then. <laughs> okay, this is another one. Um, in Judaism, it is the female that carries the bloodline while it is the male that is always placed on a pedestal. I never understood this blind faith, follow God without question, but good little Jewish girls were always meant to be compliant. <laughs> Love their mothers, know how to keep house, make sons, make perfect chicken soup. <laughs> this was the privilege of my faith. I lived with the constancy of bruised knees and split lips from always trying to climb outward. A mother's embarrassment. Why can't you be more like other good little Jewish girls? They love and obey their mothers. 
pray for unraveled skin. I pray for unraveled skin. For broken bones mended into new patterns of resolution, so tired of always being on the outside looking in. I prayed for salvation and found refuge in synagogue. Yeah. Who would have thought? <laughs> Every Saturday there was synagogue. We'd climb inside Dad's old Buick, you know the kind, with the freshly polished vinyl seats. Reflections of my imagination smashed against the windowsill. Concrete roads became camel routes and sand dunes. Those bucket seats would be would be my saddle. <laughs> Lake Michigan, the Sea of Galilee, it was time to be schooled. Teachers would share old stories about old Jerusalem and ancient Persia and Egypt, about temples built and destroyed and built and destroyed again. We were God's chosen people, and I was a holy warrior like Leah and Rebecca. I would carry their history along the I would carry their history around the length of my spine. Their bottle scars became my body armor. Their strength embedded in my DNA. This bears repeating. You see, for every great man, <coughs> there is always the strength of a woman. Abraham had Sarah, Jacob had Rachel. Someone would have me. I would always be. Are you okay? Are you okay? Okay. <laughs> I would always be a daughter of Israel, a holy warrior. These hands will carry you with the strength of a thousand gods. If I had a daughter, I'd build her a ladder, teach her to climb, revel in her bruised knees and split lips, teach her that her origins are hers. She was never meant to be chained to someone's ego, all in the name of God. And that pedestal would always be hers for the taking. Number two. That was the one we're looking for. Is that um, We're already 10 minutes late, and now we're supposed to end with the piece. So okay. That's are, we, okay. Are, we, are we cool? Are you all right with no, the two? Well, I asked for the two for the things. Oh, OK. I mean, the no problem. problem. Is that cool? It's cool. It's it's cool. Always. Give it up for Robin Bond! Because after this, we're going to have like a one minute, two minute feature a break after this before we have our next feature of. I sent you an invite. They're all talking. Of Virginia Hunt. Oh, uh, yeah. Give it up. Yeah, I know. We're all being quiet. And just let everybody know it's trolling around for money right after I do this for the intros because they all deserve it. Uh, but uh, this is in honor of. Well, I don't know if it's an honor, but this was a thing I thought of for her and mine, and this was a piece called Diane, talking about her trip to Mexico City. So I decided to take a trip to Mexico City. I decided that this was going to be the trip I take by myself, and I lost my... I've got a calendar showing up. Calendar to use, calendar. I, I've lost my thing. All right, you're gonna have two minutes, and if anything, I might do that again right before a phenomenal feature. And in two minutes, I want you to keep Tressa really busy for the next two minutes because we have a phenomenal feature. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It wasn't my and I am sitting here trolling with the bags, which I get to do. Da 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 da. Pom, cha, cha. I want you to put your life savings into this bag for our two features because we've got money that will go to both of them. It's going to be split both ways. And, oh, I hate to be an ash, but if there's somebody like a, you know, a, a partner or something that says, you know, I want like extra to go to somebody, you go come to me and say that or whatever. But I'm going to throw this. 
Yeah, yeah he's going to be there first. Pedro, I'm going to put your lips in because they put everything they had into it. And so, you know, you do this thing. And because I did not do this before, this is what I thought was an appropriate way to end the thing for Virginia Hunt. I hope that this was appropriate. This poem that was going to be a piece called Diane. I was already drinking. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to wait and see if people want to actually hear it. How are you all doing? Should I wait a little? Now, this in between, before we go to our next panel feature, is Diane talking about her trip to Mexico City. This is, I'm doing this more efficiently. So I decided to take a trip to Mexico City. I decided that this was going to be the trip I take by myself. This was going to be the trip where I reclaim my independence. This is going to be the trip where I venture out, will take on the world, all without help from a travel companion, from a man. So I went there, and really it wasn't so frightening as I thought it would be. I mean, I needed to learn a bit more of the language, but otherwise I got along just fine. Oh, I got lost once, and the men in cars kept offering to give me rides. Hey, baby, you want your own private taxi? And I'd have to move away from them. But then one guy told me which bus I wanted, and so I thought it was just fine. But the man that ran the hotel thought it was, wasn't safe for me. And he asked me if my parents loved me, if my family loved me, if anyone loved me, anyone at all. Because if anyone did, why would they let me go on a trip alone? <laughs> And then I was uh, out touring, and I went to an old church, and there was a saint, and they are considered a saint because their body doesn't decompose. It's not like religion in America, because they had to put this saint's body in a glass case, because all the people who came to see him would pick off a part of his face as a souvenir. <laughs> And then I was at the, uh, and then as I was touring, I went to a nunnery, a place that was supposedly where all those supposed bad young girls were sent to, to live out the remainder of their days. And they showed me around the tour, and they said, here is the cross that the young woman had to carry when they walked around in circles around in the courtyard. And here, over here, these are the crowns of thorns the woman wore. And I looked at the crosses, the crowns, and they still had blood on them. And this is how things work, I guess. And they looked at me as strange because I was taking a trip alone. No one in Mexico, Mexico City understood why I'd want to go and be there. No one understood why I wanted to be alone. Plus awesome. And you know, earlier I was going, oh, Virginia Hunt's coming up, and I've been doing this all night. Oh, oh, wait, what are they featuring this year? They're featuring right now, so <laughs> I keep doing it. Like, wait, I shouldn't do that. But what I should do is that in two weeks from now, because we're a two week organization, is June 4th, which happens to be the 21 year anniversary of CCD Magazine, which nobody yeah. No, but it, nobody knows about. But a lot of you have, and I think Jerry Pendergast, I don't know if he has stuff in there, but he has stuff in the bonus books and everything. So come out and guess what? We happen to also have Eric Esten as a feature for the evening. I'm going to ask everybody that comes in two weeks to read something from CCD Magazine. If they don't have a scene of it, just freaking pick something and read it and just do your own thing, like, because that's just, because I'm being behoggy that way. <laughs> Well, I'm echoing a lot. Two weeks after that is June 18th. And I think I mentioned that before, but that happens to be my own feature because I'm releasing books, because I'm going to have a book out. And I haven't done that since the 90s of having poetry out. 
And so I'm going to be doing haiku readings, and some of you out here are going to join me and read some haikus. And even Virginia Hunt read one of the haikus that Avram was is going to read, scheduled to read at my feature, which is kind of cool. But um, if anybody wants to read something for Hot Me Now, and then we're going to get into July, Dan Clary's on July 7th, July 16th, you're going to guess. Guess what? Kathleen Shanamire Bartles is going to be joined by Lynn West. Oh yeah, on July 30th. And if you want to know anything about the features that are coming up, you can always go to www.chaoticarts.org slash the cafe, because this is the cafe gallery. And if you want to bug me, get any information at all, and I would love to see you in just two weeks. And thank you so much.